so uh, we started to with our uh, this uh, unit uh, or this uh, subject with some basic understanding of uh, uh, signals so first we started what is the e that i had explained to you why uh, here i had uh, one second just give me a Here I had uh, tried to explain to you is that why we are studying signals, right? Why signals? Why signals are important and all I had told you. Then I had explained to you what is the signal. Right? So I had that I had explained. Uh, then uh, we saw that uh, the real time example. of uh, signal right so what is exactly a signal means that we have actually seen right so these things we have seen while discussing the signals then we went to the systems okay so this is the different representation of signal okay so the first we say saw what is how we represent in the space that is x and y coordinator again understand this we can have the z direction also right but we c uh, it is very difficult us for us to represent a signal in three dimension or the four dimension or five dimension in fact in the four and five dimension it is impossible for us to represent a signal so in two dimensional space that is x and on the y axis it is uh, easier for us to represent a signal right so this was a space domain right this was our graph paper right this is a graph paper so in that on that we had actually plotted some dots and then we connected that and uh, that was a s representation of a signal in the space right space is just in the in terms of distances okay and that is called a spatial domain then we know that uh, on x axis if i am taking time right on the y axis it can be an amplitude voltage or uh, uh, current right anything can be there out of this but on the x axis this is the x axis so on the x axis it should be um the time right if on x axis if it is a time then it is a time domain signal okay so that is a representation of a signal in time domain and on x axis if i am using frequency so f is there that is frequency is there on x on the y axis it can be again amplitude voltage or something like that then this is a frequency domain representation example of this i had given you right in the communication you might have plotted a si signal like this uh, might be in the amplifier right so in the amplifier actually you might have seen this so this is say 5 hertz and this might be 10 kilohertz something like this okay like this you might have plotted a signal right and this was the gain right so if you are plotting something like this this is a frequency domain representation of a signal understand here signal is not changing is not changing only representation is changing is changing okay so you need to keep this in mind is that signal is not changing representation of that signal is changing okay so this was a representation of signal that we have seen then we had went to the this is actually it was uh, systems what is the system that we had seen okay so then we had went to the uh, continuous time and discrete time okay uh, and i hope that this is clear to you okay 
so the first uh, graph was the example of sine wave okay here in between one cycle there were infinite point right if i cut some part also suppose if i cut this part this part will also contain an infinite points and therefore this is a continuous time signal continuous in time okay it is a continuous in time whereas this is a here you can see that red points i had taken this we call as a samples so i had taken few samples so understand this in entire cycle if i take 10 samples in one cycle then there are uh, so as th uh, there are 10 samples in one uh, uh, cycle i am representing one cycle as a 10 samples okay and this is called as discrete time signal so two terminology we have seen is continuous time signal and second one is discrete time signal okay so what we do is that we put this in the bracket this is implied because we are discretizing or continuously we are taking on time and therefore what we say that continuous signal and discrete signal okay on x axis only we had we have actually uh, considered whether it is continuous or a discrete okay so i hope i am clear with the thing that what is a continuous time and what is a discrete time yes is it clear yes this actually we yes. have discussed earlier i am just revising it um, what is a continuous time and what is a discrete time okay <coughs> then i had tried to make you understand that a uh, discrete time is not a digital signal okay that i had tried to explain to you this is the block diagram of conversion of an analog signal to a digital signal where we take the samples so sampling taking the samples i had shown over here then it is passed to analog to digital converter okay what it does is that i had shown over here suppose my uh, signal is varying from 5 volt to minus 5 volt or minus 5 volt to 5 volt so even though i take the discrete sample in time in time then also on y axis that is the amplitude axis it can be 1.5 volt right it can be something like 1.5 volt or 1.25 volt or 1.225 volt something like this so i have not discretized okay i haven't take a distinct uh, values of this sample of this signal right and when i do that that i wanted to show you today okay suppose this is my sine wave okay so very smooth sine wave understand this uh, my drawing is not that good okay suppose this is very smooth uh, sine wave uh, let me just change the pointer color okay so what i will do is that suppose this is uh, for you and this is minus for you i hope that color is visible to you this green color is visible to you i hope you are okay with yes sir okay thank yes. you yes yes thank you okay so this is zero volt so i what i'll do is that i will put five lines over here 1 2 3 4 4 and 5 1 2 3 4 and this is fifth okay so this is 1 uh, minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 minus 4 1 2 3 4 and this is 5 so now what i did is that i have 
I am going to take a discrete points over here. But what might happen over here is that I might take. Uh, suppose I will start from here. Okay. So if I take uh, distinct few samples from here, this one is one. Two, three, four, and five. Suppose I am going to take this at zero. There is no problem. But what happen? What might happen is that I might be taking a sample over here, somewhere over here. But if I try to take the equivalent of that, it might go between this four and the five. Okay. Suppose this is four point say four. And if I am taking this value over here, suppose this is three point nine. This is four point four, and suppose this is three point nine. Okay, or it can be something four point four point four three or three point one nine two something like this. Okay, it is value something like this. So what to do? Either I have to go to the four, or I have to go to five. In that case, something called quantization come. Quantization. Okay, so we decide some step values. How I do that? I just have a value something like this. Okay, so I jump to this. What I'll do is that I will not jump to four point three. I will jump to the four volt. Then five volt or so on. It is something like this. Okay. So what will happen is that whatever voltage I am choosing, it will not be four point four three. It will be four volt. It will be four volt. Okay. Here also it will not be three point nine four. It will be four volt. And by intuition you can tell. That if a value is less than four point five, I am rounding it to four point five. Okay, oh, sorry, I am rounding it to four. Okay, so let me just write properly. If the value is is less than four point five, I am rounding it to four volt. If the value is greater than four point five, I am I am going to round it to five volt, right? If the value is say less than uh, <coughs> less than four and greater than three point five, I am going to round it to four volt, and so on. Okay, so if it is greater than three point five, uh, it is covered over here. If it is less than three point five, it is less than three point five, and greater than three. Then it will be rounded to three, like this. So I am taking a discrete steps. Okay, so I am going to discretize on this. So this is pro this process is called analog to digital converter. Okay, then what I'll do is that. I will say that four volt is nothing but say. So after this, what I'm going to do, what I'm going to get is something like this: values in the range of five volt, four volt, three volt, two volt, one volt, zero, minus one, minus two, minus three, and so on. Okay. So in this, I will just consider the above five uh, positive values. What I'll do is that. I will consider zero as zero, 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 zero. Okay. I will consider one as zero, 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 one, 
टू एज ज़ीरो ज़ीरो वन ज़ीरो थ्री एज ज़ीरो ज़ीरो वन वन फोर एज ज़ीरो वन ज़ीरो ज़ीरो फाइव एज ज़ीरो वन ज़ीरो वन सो नाउ आई वॉट आई डिट इज दैट आई रिप्रेजेंटेड इन बाइनरी फॉर्म and this is called as the coding okay why it is called as coding because what are the levels of voltages was there i had converted to the binary value i coded in binary value okay for negative simply what i we do is that instead of zero i write this as one to represent it as minus one and so on okay so what i did is in the first i had taken the samples then what i did is that i did the quantization like this and in the third step what i did is that i did the coding in the first step on x axis that is on time axis what i did is that i had taken the uh, discrete values of the signal okay discrete after some time okay so this is called as this is called as sampling time okay this is called as sampling time because kitne der ke baad aap sample le rahe ho that we are representing right after how much time okay after how much interval you are taking a sample and therefore this is called as a sampling time okay so what we did is that we had did the sampling then quantization or a to d converter and then encoding and therefore our block diagram actually looks like something like this first is sampler so as we are taking sample okay so this here input is analog signal we are taking sample here after taking sample i am going to get a uh, discrete values but understand this at this point also signal is analog okay after this what i am going to do is that quantization understand this quantization and decoder or encoder so not decoder it is encoder uh, we do not decode we first encode okay so this is my mistake we use encoder okay and generally this is this entire is one block even though i am representing separately this is entirely one block so therefore we am i'm not going to get a intermediate output over here and this is going to be a digital signal okay so analog to digital converter okay so here also the main thing is to understand is that input is our analog signal discrete signal i will write here instead of values i will write here discrete signal is going to be an analog signal and digital signal is uh, will be represented in ones and zeros okay input i will represent at x of t okay i don't have to write anything to this because it is something like x of n something like this but what about this how i will represent i cannot represent as x of n or in this type so therefore what i do is that i represent this x of in round bracket i represent as n what this n means now understand this in the signal it was in analog here 
in the analog it was easy let me just draw it again in analog it is easy that is this is t right and this is my signal something like this so i can say that a signal x of t at say t is equal to say 0.001 second i can do like this but what about a discrete signal a discrete signal is something like this it is something like this right so i cannot write t at 0.01 so what we do is that in this representation this is zero okay so this is zero sample this is first sample this is second third fourth fifth sixth seventh eighth right this is 9 10 11 12 and so on okay so we give numbers to particular samples and therefore we represent that as x of n why small x and small n this is still an analog and in time domain okay and for these two reasons we represent something like this okay so this is a uh, represent of a signal or uh, discrete signal and continuous signal if you are understood uh, let me just ask you have you understood it i know that i had spent a lot of time on this but this is very basic and we need to understand this if you haven't understand anything uh, don't worry uh, let me know i can repeat it please let me uh, if anyone is there who have not understood or have you understood very uh, basic concept is there which will be with you for long long time so i am asking you have you understood it yes sir yes sir anyone is there who haven't understood it please let me know that so that i can actually again i can repeat it yes sahil okay sahil and okay fine so uh, this is uh, actually the discrete time signal and continuous time signal i know that uh, it might had been covered to you in the past also uh, might had i don't know exactly but uh, this is very basic thing and we were supposed to know this then uh, there is uh, something called representation of signal okay so how we represent a signal there are three ways to represent a signal first is we write an equation we write an equation of a signal for example say x of t is equal to a sin t we i had written an just an simple equation i hope uh, it is clear okay so the first representation is writing an equation second is uh, a representation in form of table okay so in this form what we do is that we actually write t and corresponding x of t understand this when i say that x of t is we familiar form of this is function of t right so we many times we had written this right function of t so what we will do over here is that 
we will put different values of t 0 0.01 0 0.02 0 0.03 and so on and we will try to find out corresponding value of x of t right and that i will i can represent okay for example i have a signal say e raised to minus 0.2 n now here understand this this is a discrete time signal discrete time signal so it is called as dt signal discrete time signal right why how i understood this is a discrete time signal because there is a n if it would had been t this would have been discrete not discrete continuous time signal ct signal right whereas now it is n as it is n this is discrete time signal okay so what i'll do is that i will draw this kind of table here the values of n i will put and here x of n that is e raised to 0. Point, 0. 0.2 n so first value i'll put is 0 if i'll put 0 over here what will happen is that e raised to entire value will become 0 right this raised to will become 0 so e raised to 0 is 1 right if i'll put a value of 1 over here and if you'll calculate it it comes out to be 0 0.818 if i'll put 2 over here uh, i hope you have the uh, calculator with you if you'll do that it comes out to be 0 0.67 if i'll put 3 over here it is 0 0.5488 if I put 4 over here, it comes out to be 0 0.44A. For 5, it is 0 0.3678 and so on. I can do and I can calculate the remaining values and I can represent that values in terms of the table. Okay, So, this is the second representation. First representation is that representation of a signal in terms of the <coughs> in terms of the equation right so this representation is in terms of equation right this is second representation in terms of table right third representation is in terms of sequence okay so how i do that is that I write a curly bracket ok I just I, I will just copy these values and then I will tell you 1 0 0.1 uh, 0 0.818 then 0 0.67 0 0.5488 0 0.448 and so on so this will continue understand this even though i had started with the zero there can be a minus value also minus one can be there minus two can be there minus three can be there right so this sequence will actually extend in the negative side also now if i'll write something like this i will not understand from where is my start of the signal to represent a start of the signal wherever there is a zero n is equal to zero that i will represent like this okay so like this i represent a sequence okay so in general how i represent suppose this is minus 3 minus 2.5 minus 1.1 then um, 7 right um, 8 5 minus 1.1 minus 2 8 9 and anywhere 
here can be n is equal to 0. Understand this, these values are of the values on y axis, right. So, it can be minus or plus over here. I hope I am clear, I hope I have not confused you. Is it clear? Tejas? Yes, sir. Right. Again, let me write another signal. It can be minus 5, 4, 1, 3, minus 3, 2, 5, minus 1, and so on. Here also it will go on and there can be a value like this. This can be n is equal to 0. So, if I have to represent in the graphical form, what will happen? This is 0. So, the value of at 0 is minus 3. At 1, this is going to be at 1. At 1, it is going to be 2. At 2, it is going to be 5 minus 1. Right. On this side, it is going to be a 1, right. Then 4, somewhere over here, 4 minus 5, right. And n are going to be something like this. This is my 0th sample, this is 1 sample first sample, this is second sample, this is third sample, this is minus one sample, this is minus two sample, this is minus third sample, right. So, it is represented over here. This is n is equal to 0, this is first sample, this is second, this is third, this is minus one, minus two, minus three, okay. How I got this? By this equation, uh, by another equation, but it could be something like this. Okay. So, 3 represent and this is the fourth representation that is in graphical form. Okay. So, we have seen the four representations of the signal. First representation is in the form of equation something like this. This is equation form. Second one is in the tabular shown over here third one is in the sequence where we write entire sequence and we show that where is the start of the signal right it can be ha it can have positive samples or the samples on the negative side okay it is something like this and the fourth is graphical representation like this four representations of the signal once we saw the signal uh, different different um, representation we need to see the different types of signal ok so next time um, I hope that we will be able to finish it we are going to start that uh, representation of signal over here